send secret photos through BitTorrent. Ello gets more dough and is an open source Microsoft in our future. What? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 309 for Friday, April 3rd, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all of the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first free two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney, and joining us today to talk tech news is Ruth Reeder, writer at VentureBeat. Welcome, Ruth. Hi. So today you wrote about how BitTorrent's La BitTorrent Labs encrypted Android mobile messaging app Bleep is now capable of sending secure pictures. First, let's talk a little bit about BitTorrent. Like a lot of people know BitTorrent as the peer-to-peer -peer peer file, file sharing protocol that allows you to not so exactly legally share movies and TV shows by breaking up the larger files and sharing them across a network of computers. But your story is about the, the very legitimate company, BitTorrent, correct? Yes, exactly. So tell so, us, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say, so basically what they did today was they rolled out uh, the ability to send pictures. So now you're not only going to be able to send text in an encrypted message, you'll also be able to send videos in encrypted. Excellent. So uh, how does the messaging work? app work? Does it work a lot like Facebook Messenger or any other WhatsApp? Any know. other messenger? Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Pretty straightforward there. So how, how do they secure the photos? They use end-to-end -end encryption, and what additionally they do is that they don't store your messages on servers at all. So all data related to your message is kept on the device, um, which prevents it from being hacked. I mean, like, not totally. You know, somebody could hack your device, but it would nobody would really want to do that. <laughs> you know, attacking a server is much more beneficial because you have access to multiple messages, um, and by avoiding the server altogether, it further secures your messages. All right. So is Bleep something that you use regularly? No. <laughs> <laughs> is that terrible? I should. I write about security a lot. I really should use it. Uh, but there are a couple of others out there. There's also Tech Secure. Um, and WhatsApp actually should be getting encrypted messaging. I can't remember whether it's been rolled out or not, but I know that that's something that they're going for too. And with projects like this, uh, with Bleep, the whole idea is to get bigger messengers like your Facebook, app, uh, Facebook Messenger to adopt these kinds of practices so that it becomes a worldwide standard or at least a, yes. a more widely adopted standard. So a proof of concept, like, hey, this works and you could do it too kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for the average Joe at this point, it's, you know, for us, whatever messaging system we're working is probably using right now is probably fine. Yeah. And also, you know, with Bleep, it's only available to Android users and I happen to be an iPhone user. Right. So uh, you also wrote a piece today about Ello um, that's a similarly, you know, trying to go against Facebook. It's the Adless Social Networking Service. They just received $5 million in funding. Now, how does Ello plan to make money? Well, they say what they're going to do is offer a lot of paid features. So you've seen the same sort of thing from like a WeChat, which is a Chinese messaging app. Um, and, you know, that means charging for emojis or charging for special services, which they haven't currently outlined. So we don't really know what that's going to look like. They've just been very adamant about not doing advertising. Well, it's interesting because I think with a lot of these apps, it's like, you know, you, you sign up and then you just sort of wait, like, well, how, how, how are they going to charge me? When are they going to start charging me? You know, with, with ad supported networks, you're just like, okay, well, I've been here, done that. I understand, you know, I'm making some sacrifices, but with this, it's, it seems to not be really catching on very much. Well, you know, it's funny because it caught on hugely when they first rolled out, right? Last summer, everybody was all about Ello. Can I get an Ello account? Um, and then it tapered off because it had a number of issues. Um, you know, there were some usability issues. You couldn't search for people. You couldn't really find your friends. Um, and I think that Facebook also was sort of like an old steady standard that people could turn to. Um, what's nice is that, you know, now they have 11 million in funding, right? So now is their time to figure it out if they are going to figure out uh, how to do it without advertising or if they are going to figure out what audience they want to latch on to, like they now have the money to do that. Why do you think people are investing in this? 
I think because it took off so rapidly, so immediately, like they had enormous user growth so out of nowhere. And I think that it caught investors' eyes. I mean, how could it not? It was like the talk of the media for weeks, months even. So I think that's why they're still seeing investment. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you say that, you know, you have an LO account, so your friends have an LO account, um, but you haven't really used it in months. Um, so it's, I wonder if it's something similar, you know, we've been hearing, we heard a lot about Meerkat and Periscope and Meerkat got a ton of funding. And then, you know, now it's like, are there really the users there? Or is it just journalists talking about it and hyping it and real people could care less? I think that that's a totally valid question. Um, and it's really hard to say because, you know, they say that they have millions of users, right? But how many of those are actually active accounts? Like how many are those people who posted in the last month? Uh, or even the last few weeks or the last day. I, I don't know. I don't have the answers to any of that. Um, and I, it, I don't know. In this circumstance, it's one of those things where only time will tell. Um, yeah. It does seem like it might be the same case that we were just talking about with Bleep. I mean, will people really switch over because they don't want ads? Or will they really use a different, you know, messaging because they, they don't, they want more privacy? Or is it just that we're so, you know, we're kind of just too lazy? I mean, you know, especially there's been studies that say millennials are really not that concerned with privacy. So I don't, I don't know. That's more of a question for you than me. I think you're more of a millennial than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say, I do think, I will say, I think that Ello's platform and, and going against ads is really interesting. And I think that they are like poised to do some really cool experimenting. I don't know that advertising will always win. You know, we use it for a lot of things. We use it for media, um, but also, you know, an over-reliance on, advertising was also said to be the thing that caused the first dot com collapse. So like, you know, is it bad to be experimenting with other, uh, with other forms and other ways of monetizing? No, I don't think so. All right. Good point. So, uh, you also wrote about vine today. They released a big update for windows phone users. Uh, what kind of new uh, functions did, did they release for this update? Basically, this is stuff that uh, both Android and iOS users already have, but it's, uh, it's like added editing functionality, the ability to pull in uh, pictures from, or I'm sorry, videos from, uh, you know, your phone, your library of, of videos. Um, it also gives you loop counts. So now you can tell like how many people are seeing your stuff um, and, I'm trying to think. There's one other thing that I've totally forgotten. Oh, um, and messaging. It was saving That's drafts. It was. No, it was messaging. Oh. They've also got messaging. So now you can, you know, directly message people uh, privately. So you're not just, it's not just about the social feed. Right. So, uh, th so these are features that already iOS users have. They got them about like six months ago or no, a little bit longer, probably about eight or nine months ago. Um, and now... Last but not least, you know, Windows users are getting them. Right. And or so, Windows phone. Right, Windows phone users. So that's available today. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, Ruth, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. I know you're on the East Coast, so thanks for staying yes. late on a Friday. Ruth Reeder is a writer at Venture Beat. Are there any stories that you're covering that you can tell us about coming up? Currently, um, I did just do, I've had a lot of messaging today. I did a, I did a review of a photo messaging app. So you should uh, keep an eye out for that. All right. Thank you, Ruth. Take care. Have a good one. Coming up, happy birthday, Microsoft, and how one hacker saved all your talking dog videos on YouTube. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is sponsored by Blue Apron. Blue Apron makes cooking delicious meals easy and fun by delivering fresh, ready-to-cook meals right to your door. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron sends you fresh ingredients, perfectly proportioned with step-by-step -step recipe instructions, including beautifully printed pictures, making cooking healthy meals really easy and fun. No trips to the grocery store, no waste from unused ingredients. Blue Apron's experts source only the best seasonal ingredients for incredible meals like Navarin-style lamb meatball stew, or spiced chickpea burgers. You'll cook incredible meals and be blown away by the quality and the freshness. Blue Apron, it's a better way to cook. Check out this week's menu and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's right, two free meals just for going to blueapron.com slash twit. And we thank Blue Apron for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Happy 40th birthday, Microsoft. I think with everything we've seen from you lately, it really is true that over the hill means nothing anymore. And most of us hit our stride at 40. 
That's what I would like to believe anyway. So it's exciting to hear that this week at the Open Source Conference ChefCon, veteran Windows engineer Mark Rasinovich said that it was definitely possible that Microsoft could go open source at some point in the future. Now, there are no signs that this will happen anytime in the near future. It's true that Microsoft has been making apps that run on iOS and Android and acquiring companies that already create better software than they can. But this won't necessarily lead directly to a Microsoft world with no licensing fees or no intellectual property. That's kind of crazy talk. But happy birthday anyway, Microsoft. Don't eat too much cake. It's much harder to keep the weight off after you turn 40. And in other Microsoft news, the company announced today that the new Windows 10 browser Project Spartan will not have the Do Not Track feature turned on by default. Two years ago, Microsoft announced too much, too much fanfare that Do Not Track would be enabled by default in Internet Explorer 11. And today they announced that they were reversing this decision in order to keep up with current web standards and legalese. Microsoft's newest browser, codenamed Spartan, has the Do Not Track option, but if you want to turn it on, you've got to take care of that yourself. Why? Because according to some very boring document written by the World Wide Web Consortium, if Do Not Track is turned on by default, then consumers aren't exactly making a conscious choice to notify advertisers that they don't want their browser habits tracked. Last month, we told you about a vulnerability that could let anyone delete any public image on any Facebook page. Don't worry, it's been fixed. But now this week, Google managed to fix a huge vulnerability in the YouTube code that would allow anyone logged into the service to delete any video uploaded by any user without having their username or their password. The bug was identified by a software engineer, Camille Hismaltilin, and reported to Google on March 31st. Google fixed the problem in a few hours, and to thank Camille for his reporting, Google paid him $5,000 via their Vulnerability Research Grant Program. I would like to thank Camille personally because there are some videos that should never, ever be deleted. Me. So I ate it. Oh, no. <laughs> and finally, Business Insider is reporting that way back in 2012, a bunch of people tweeted to at HBO that they would gladly pay for an HBO subscription. Well, it's been a few years, and now that HBO does have a sort of standalone service that you can pay for on Apple TV or Sling, they are finally getting back around to tweeting back to those individuals to follow at HBO so that the company could DM them. The content of the direct messages has not been revealed, but let's hope that it's something more than, we would now happily take your money so you can watch HBO. Maybe they're offering them Game of Thrones Blu-rays box sets. Maybe. We do not know. Have you taken our annual survey yet? Go to twit.tv slash survey. Tell us what you think. Tell us if you like those dog videos. The survey is anonymous, and we really want to know what you think so we can make this show and all the other Twit shows better. We love getting feedback from our viewers and our listeners, and we recently we received a great email sent to TN2 at twit.tv from Andrew Charlney from Southampton, England. In his email, he said, I really enjoy watching TN2 every day here in the UK. You are my main source of tech news. Thank you, Andrew. He went on to give me a heads up to an interesting story currently happening in Bristol about 100 gigabytes per second speeds. And he closed by saying, I always like hearing international news on the show as well as the news from the USA. Thanks for the heads up, Andrew. This was an interesting story. Thanks for pointing it out to me. Apparently, the city of Bristol announced this smart city in mid-March. But yesterday, the register reported that all that ultra-fast fiber and the wireless mesh network across 1,500 lampposts will only be available to developers and researchers and anyone who just happens to live in Bristol need not apply. If you've got a story that you're interested in us covering, send an email to tn2 at twit.tv or you can send it directly to me at megan at twit.tv. I'm planning on setting up a Reddit for you to vote for stories for Tech News Tonight, but for now, you can always submit stories to Mike Elgin's Tech News Today Reddit because I take, check that for all the stories that he didn't already cover on our morning show. And are you watching our morning show? You can watch Tech News Today live every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern at live.twit.tv. And that is, this, that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.